Modified Allen's Test Allen's test is performed to check for preserved patency between the radial and ulnar arteries before puncturing one of these arteries, for example, during cannulation or sampling. To conduct the test, the examiner compresses both arteries until the skin of the patient's palm appears blanched. This can be accelerated by elevating the hand and having the patient repeatedly open and clench the fist. The ulnar artery is then released while compression of the radial artery is maintained, which should result in flushing of the hand due to hyperemia within 5 to 15 seconds. The test is positive. To prevent false negatives, the hand should not be hyperextended. If the hand remains blanched longer than 15 seconds, it indicates that collateral circulation is inadequate or non-existent between the arteries, and the test is negative. A faster version of the test can be conducted by compressing only one of the arteries and then having the patient clench a fist for several seconds. A lack of flushing after opening the hand suggests an insufficient or absent collateral flow from the artery that has not been compressed. The peripheral vascular examination is often the primary focus of an OSCE. If asked to examine a patient's peripheral vascular system, start your exam with general inspection from the end of the bed. In the peripheral vascular exam, note specifically leg size, noting the presence of fat, fluid or muscle, deformity or asymmetry, scars such as those from venous harvesting, arterial bypass or varicose vein surgery, rashes, ulceration, Amputation. Note the color of the limb. Observe for stigmata of arterial insufficiency, such as pallor of one or both limbs, dry skin, hair loss, thickened atrophic nails, arterial ulceration, dark blackened toes, dependent rubber or amputation of digits or sections of limb. Observe for stigmata of venous insufficiency, hyperpigmentation of lipodermatous sclerosis, which can cause an inverted champagne bottle appearance, edema, and venous dermatitis or eczema, which may manifest as discoloration, pruritus, scaling, erosions, or crusting. Both of these may be confused with cellulitis, but unlike cellulitis, do not cause systemic symptoms or respond to antibiotics. Observe for venous varicosities and note the presence of edema. Okay. So I'm just going to put my hands. Palpate for temperature along the legs using the dorsum of your fingers. Palpate any erythematous areas for warmth with the dorsum of your fingers. Okay, now I'm just going to squeeze a toe. Check capillary refill time. This is normally less than three seconds. Next, check for pitting edema bilaterally by applying pressure to the distal medial tibia just above the medial malleolus. If present, comment on depth and determine how far up the leg it goes. So could I just get you to bend your knee a little bit? Palpate the peripheral pulses of the lower limb. Start with the femoral artery. Move on next to the popliteal artery. This is located in the popliteal fossa and can be difficult to appreciate without practice. It's fine. Just the same on the other side. Just bend your knee up a little bit. Move on to dorsalis pedis pulse. This is located lateral to extensor hallucis longus tendon, just distal to the dorsal surface of the navicular bone. Palpate for posterior tibialis between the medial malleolus and heel at the same time. In this way, it is easier to hone in on both pulses. Okay, so Dara, I'm gonna lift your leg up to about 45 degrees. Let me know if it's getting uncomfortable for you. Mm -hmm. To perform Berger's test, elevate the patient's leg to 45 degrees. It quickly becomes pale if arterial supply is poor. 
Is that okay? So I'm going to get you to swing your legs over and drop them over the edge of the bed on that side. Then move the leg back and allow it to dangle over the edge of the bed. If arterial supply is impaired, a reactive hyperemia occurs and the leg becomes red. And can you just stand up please? And with your back to me. Palpate any varicose veins. Note the other tests for varicose veins described in the notes. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's everything, Dara. Thanks very much. Bye now. Hi there, nice to meet you. My name's Rob. I'm one of the medical students here. Could I just check your name and your age, please? It's Colin Brewster. I'm 24. Hi there, Colin. I've been asked today to perform a peripheral vascular examination on you. Okay. What that will involve is me having a quick look at your hands, mm -hmm. look at your face, and then feeling the pulses in your arms and your legs. Would that be okay with you? Yeah, no problem, yeah. Excellent. If I could ask you to remove your t-shirt at this point, and I'll have a quick look at you from the end of the bed. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Are you comfortable there, Colin? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Colin, can I just have a quick look at your hands then, please? Yeah. And if you could turn them over for me. I need to assess the temperature in your hands and arms now as well. That's great. So I'm just going to squeeze on your fingers now, Colin. I'm just going to feel your pulse now. And your other pulse too. That's fine. Straighten your arms out for me. Excellent. And I'm going to feel the pulses in your neck now. That's great. And at this point, Colleen, could I just ask that we put the bed down flat? Excellent. I'm just going to have a feel in the centre of your abdomen now, it might be a little uncomfortable. If I could ask you to lift your right leg up, please, Colin. That's great. And your left leg now, please. Excellent, thank you. I'm going to have a look at your toes now. And can you wiggle your toes for me, please, Colin? I'm just going to assess the temperature in your legs and your feet. And I'll press on your toes. I'm just going to feel the pulses in your groin now, Colin. Could I ask okay. you to lower your boxes slightly? Yep.
just going to have a listen to the pulse as well. And if you could let me take the weight of your leg now, please. I'm going to have a listen behind your knees now. Again, just let me take the weight of your leg. I'm going to feel the pulses in your feet and your legs now. Right. Left. Right. Left. So that concludes my examination. Thank you very much for letting me examine you today, Colin. You can get dressed now. Okay, thank you. Today I performed a peripheral arterial examination on Colin. The examination was unremarkable, with no stigmata of peripheral arterial disease present. To complete my examination, I could perform Berger's test if there was suspicion of critical ischemia, I would measure ABPI and I would like to carry out a full cardiovascular examination. Washing my hands. Hello, Mr. Hoffman. How are you? Doing well, thank you. My name's Nancy. I'm going to be doing an assessment of your peripheral vascular system today. Uh, I'm going to start out by asking you a couple of questions. Um, have you ever had any problems in your legs with varicose veins? No, I have not. Okay. Any problems with pain in your calves or in your thighs when you walk that then stops when you rest? No. All right. And any history of problems with your blood vessels that you know about? No. Okay, all right, good. So I'm going to start out by looking at your upper extremities. And so um, just if you can hold your arms out, that would be great. And I'm looking at the color of the skin, and I'm also touching with the back of my hands to check temperature all the way down to the fingertips so your skin is warm. The skin color is appropriate for ethnicity. I do not see any pallor or cyanosis. And I'm looking also at your arms for any lesions or anything abnormal, which I do not see. I see you've been out in the sun a little bit. Yes, I have. So it's summertime, so that's okay. And then as I move down the hands, I'm also looking at your fingertips. I'm checking for capillary refill by pressing on each of the nails on both hands. The fingernails are pink, which is normal. And I also am checking the profile sign, which uh, I'm looking right here, the angle here should be less than 160 degrees. And so I see that the profile sign is at 160 degrees, which would be normal. So then I'm going to check your pulses. I'm going to start by checking your radial pulses. All right. So as I'm checking the pulses, I'm checking them at the same time so I can see if they are symmetrical. The strength, normal, is 2 plus. And I'm also checking the rhythm, which should be regular, and the rate should be within normal limits. And then I'm going to move on to the brachial pulses. And here again, I am checking for the strength, the rhythm is regular, and the rate is within normal limits. All right, good. That's the, all I need for the upper extremities. I'm going to look now at your legs. So I'm going to have you put your legs up, and if you want to lay back, if that's more comfortable, it's fine. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the lower extremities, first looking at the color, which is appropriate for ethnicity. I'm looking at hair distribution, and the reason for that is when there's poor circulation, sometimes then there's no hair on the lower extremities anymore. And I'm also looking at the lower extremities for any lesions or anything abnormal. <clears throat> it looks like there's a, um, a little something here, 
where um, where you got hurt. Um, you had a little um, scab there. Did something happen with your leg there, Mr. Hoffman? Yes, I was riding my bicycle, and uh, my uh, leg uh, was going through a big mud puddle, and my leg uh, came uh, away from the pedal and scraped the pedal. Oh, okay. How long ago was that? Uh, that would be approximately two weeks. Okay. Does it seem like it's healing okay? It does. Okay. All right. I'd be concerned if it was taking a long time for that to heal, but it seems like it's healing normally. All right. I'm also going to touch the lower extremities first for temperature. I use the back of my hands and I come all the way down, all the way down to the toes. And his skin is warm all the way down to the toes. And um, I've checked for any abnormalities. I'm also checking, looking at the if there's any venous pattern or particularly the back of the legs is where you would look for any varicose veins, which I do not see. All right, and then I'm going to look at the toes. I'm looking at the color. I'm looking at the nail bed should be pink. And I'm also checking for capillary refill. Capillary refill should be less than two seconds, according to some authors, less than three. According to other authors, um, you can document as less than two seconds or less than three seconds, or if it's very fast, you could document capillary refill is brisk. And then I'm going to be checking the pulses on the feet, okay? These are the dorsalis pedis pulses right on the top of the foot. And you wanna check the strength, normal would be two plus. The rhythm should be regular, and the rate should be within normal limits. Now, <clears throat> the way you find this pulse, there's a couple different ways you can do. You can just start from here between the first and second toe and move straight up. Um, I like to find this bone that's right here and then just move laterally or towards the outside to find that. He has nice, strong pulses, so they're easy to find. Many elderly patients, it's very difficult to find their pedal pulses, and sometimes they're not palpable, in which case you would get a Doppler to try to find those pulses. And you'd look at other um, assessment findings to see if there is good circulation to the toes, like the color, the temperature, and the capillary refill. So next I'm going to check the, po the um, postibial pulse. So here's the malleolus right here, that bone, and you want to just slide your fingers right here there's almost like a notch there, and that's where you're gonna find that pulse. This one sometimes can be a little bit harder to find. You might see you have to move your fingers around a little bit, or sometimes you have to put your fingers in there and sort of even press up towards that bone. So, and you would obviously you would check both of these, okay, if you can find them and do that at the same time, so you can check symmetry, that would be good. And again, you're checking the strength, this is 2 plus, it's normal, the rate is within normal limits, and the rhythm is regular. Okay, good. And that concludes our assessment of the peripheral vascular system. Good morning, my name is Dr. Tita Pon. I'm here to perform the varicose vein examination called Brody Trendelenburg test. Firstly, Ask the patient to stand to identify the location and the size of varicose veins. To perform this test, ask the patient to lie down. Elevate the patient's leg until all of the congested superficial veins collapse. A tunicate is then applied around the upper thigh to compress the superficial veins, but not too tight as to occlude the deeper veins. The leg is then lowered by asking the patient to stand. Normally, the superficial saphenous vein will fill from below within 30 to 35 seconds as blood from the capillary beds reaches the veins. 
if the superficial veins fill more rapidly with the tunicat in place. There is valvular incompetence below the level of the tunicat in the deep or communicating veins. After 20 seconds, if there has been no rapid filling, the tunicat is released. If there is sudden filling at this point, it indicates that the deep and communicating veins are competent, but the superficial veins are incompetent. The test is reported in two parts, the initial standing up of the patient and the second phase once the tunicat is removed.